it's Jazzy Jazz with Lee Bailey's EURweb.com Spotlight. We are back talking about BMF, Sundays on Stars, the story of Big Meech and Southwest T, two of the biggest trap businessmen in the world for real. <laughs> And uh, they built one of the biggest empires coming out of the Detroit, and you're repping the D, right, Cash Doll? Oh yeah. So Me? we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm so excited right here. That you're joining <laughs> us on Spotlight. I got Cash Doll, and I got the vision and the man behind the show, Randy Huggins. Welcome. Well, you know, we both from Detroit. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know you were from Detroit, Randy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, now. That's why it looked okay. like that and feel like Detroit. <laughs> okay, well, what up, though? That's why they're not saying soda. They're saying pop. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Randy, you are the visionary. That makes a big difference. <laughs> Well, Cash Doll, you really bring it in the show. I'm going to start with Randy. Randy, you're kind of the vision behind this. You know, they call you a producer, a showrunner, but the showrunner is the is the is the eyes, the vision, the shaper of the story. Talk to me about BMF and what you're hoping to bring to the screen. Um, actually, with BMF, I'm really trying to change the landscape of TV. We are. Um, but I think that was something that I wanted to do when I first came on to this project. And it's kind of interesting because everybody on this project was not the first choice. Like, I wasn't the first choice as the writer of this. 50 had two other writers, and that didn't pan out. And then he came back to me, and I was like, hell yeah, I do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, I jumped on board, and he put me in touch with Meech. And I went to prison like three or four times talking to him, talking to him on the phone every night. Uh, I came to some scurvy spots in Atlanta, scurvy spots in Detroit, all chasing down the story. And, uh, you know, we built this story, which is really based on family. It really is a family-based drama um, centering around these two brothers. And I think if people are tuning into this, like I want to see a drug story, we're much bigger than that. You know what I mean? And uh, I think just trying to focus in on that, but also focusing on a time period. You know what I mean? Our show is like in the 80s. So I really wanted to capture that. And I really wanted to capture the essence of Detroit. Like I wanted Detroit to be a character in this piece as much as Baltimore is a character in The Wire or Los Angeles is a character in Snowfall. I really wanted Detroit to come through because that city made me. It made Demetrius and Terry. It made Cash Dow. And I just really wanted to hit the nuances in that, you know, to make us shine. And you really did. I mean, you even got the house music in there. You know, I actually jacked. I actually jacked some of that music and put it on my workout playlist. <laughs> That's what's up, as you should, as you should. And uh, and you really caught. You captured the feel of Detroit in the '80s. I think in in so many ways, it's a powerful story, and the family story really comes through. You know, as I was talking about before, and I, I won't ask you this question, but I think it would have been dope to see some of the families that were affected by what was going on, you know, with the because that's when we had that crack, yeah. you know, plague hit our communities. But you really do bring that family dynamic, you know, between the mother and the father and the tension and the love between the two brothers and it is fire. So congratulations. Well, I appreciate you for yeah. That. I and think what we really want to do is humanize these characters, you know what I mean? Um, and one of the dopest things that we did was we brought on Tasha Smith. You know what I mean? And it was funny sitting here next to Cash because I, I had, I, look, I'm old, like I'm three years younger than Meech and like a year or two younger than Terry. So I had not heard of Cash Down. I'm from Detroit, but I ain't lived in Detroit in 20 years. Mm -hmm. But I was listening to <laughs> Big Sean, uh, 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 Friday Night Cypher, and I heard her spit and I was like, damn, who is that? And then I started researching, like, and looking her up. And I was like, oh, she from the crib? And then I dug deeper. And then when Tasha came on board, like, we were talking about this character, uh, Monique. And I was like, yo, I really, because I wanted somebody in a different age group that really could represent Detroit as well yeah. from a female standpoint. And I'm like, I heard of this rapper. Her name Cash Down. I was like, that's my sister. You want me to put her on the phone? And she passed her the phone, and we started talking. And then from then on, it was love And Cash yeah. Doll, you are bringing the heat to this role. Monique is sexy. She's a savage. She's classy, just like you. <laughs> she 
all of, she, you know what? That's why it wasn't so hard. <laughs> like, That's real. The hardest part for me was like um, the 80s period, right? It's like actually stripping Cash Doll and bringing Monique to life. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like with, with the press on nails, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I wasn't even, I was, I was, I, the eighties, I don't know nothing about the eighties. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, from the, the curl wigs and I'm coming to Randy crying and he like, this is what you got to do. This is who Monique is. <laughs> right. And I'm like, well, Randy, well, I'm not, I don't look like a bad bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, no makeup, just concealer. And it was just like, you know, all they did. And you know, back then he just put mascara in a right. red look and right. go about your day. And I'm like, well, wow, these ladies in the eighties was really beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It was the natural beauty. Much. It was the natural beauty. You didn't get yes, the plastic surgery, beauty, you know, so, like you I say, that was the, the hardest part. You couldn't buy the butt. <laughs> right, right. So I say that was the hardest part for me. Cause that first couple episodes, I was running there with Randy and Tasha crying and they like, you got to do what you got to do. This is mm. what, this is what this requires. Right. So, you know, I had to chunk it up, put my big girl panties on, and then I ended up falling <laughs> in love with Monique, you know? Mm -hmm. Then I was looking forward to the wigs and the, mm -hmm. the fuchsia pink lips and mm -hmm. the crown <laughs> <laughs> Well, you rocked it out. Like, you, you're you one of Little Meech's lovers, but then the crazy Lamar, your ex oh, baby, is baby. crazy. Mm -hmm. Very dedicated mother. So you had that little contradiction going on, which was really, really cute. Now, Cash, you got you got some new music out. I'm feeling yes. it, single and happy. Yeah, single and happy. Yes. Yeah, and, and it's doing really good. It's doing really good. You know, um, it's crazy how it all lines up, divine order. You know, but God's time is His timing. You know, sure. so I'm just living it, and I'm grateful right now yeah now and and now now are you still are you hooked up are you booed up with tracy t still uh yeah we still together oh uh, so you are you are booed up and happy <laughs> yeah you know i made the song single and happy when i was single and happy but i think that with anybody in this world uh the message is like you really have to be single and happy in order to be happy in a relationship yeah because it, it takes for you to get to know yourself while you're single and be happy with yourself first before you decide to be in a relationship. So, you know, I, I just want to, I, I want to give that message off. Well, mm. congratulations <laughs> on your boo. And, th and that's like Monique too. I mean, Monique yeah. was an independent woman. She has yeah. some, you know, and she was single and happy because she wasn't in a serious relationship with Little Meech, but it was a good relationship. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was dope. That was and my dope. baby daddy was just my baby daddy. <laughs> I, and I think there was, so just a little bit more about you, Cash. You, um, <laughs> you've said that your love language is gifts, but don't expect it back. <laughs> Is that real talk? No, that no, reminds no, me of Monique no, I, too. <laughs> how long ago I said that? Like nine years ago or something? Yeah, like? yeah. But you everybody still quotes it. Yeah, because nowadays I don't feel like that. I don't. Um, I, I I treat people how I want to be treated. Yeah. So I, um, my love language is gifts, but it depends on what your love language is because my man love language could not be gifts. His love language could be quality time. So if I'm buying him gifts, he don't feel love because that's not his language. That is not his language. You know what I'm saying? So I, I wouldn't say that, that I wouldn't buy somebody gifts because I'm, I'm really, um, I'm, I'm a trick mama. <laughs> I'm big mama. <laughs> Uh, last question, Cash. You know, there's a similarity in a scent. <laughs> you, you're, you're a hot mess, girl. You are a hot mess. Last question before y'all got to roll out. Um, I think there's a similarity in, in, in a sense in your story and Big Meech. Now, you might not have 100 million, but you went from being one of Detroit's biggest strippers. You had beauty bars. You ha and you, you raised your own money to invest in your own music. Talk yes. to me about that. Oh man, wow. Uh, well, I started off dancing, um, and I made twenty six thousand dollars one night, mm. and uh, that's when I was like, okay. And I start stacking my money up. I made a quarter million dollars. I oh. took that. I opened up a few beauty bars around the Midwest area, um, and then I start buying properties and fixing up properties and. Uh, I got my hands in a lot of things, but that's what I started doing. And then I put my money into my career now. And, um, you know, you know, it, I'm and doing, you're blowing up. You've been co-signed by everybody from Drake yeah. to Remy to every Remy Ma to yeah. everybody. Yeah, well, listen, y'all yeah. think the biggest TV show for sure. That's I biggest. Can't wait, I can't biggest. wait for the world to see her because, oh. um, 
yeah. What's really interesting is we can't, like, we're out there. We're just out there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we're wearing it like a badge. Like, yeah, I, if, if people like power, raising Canaan, they are going to love this because this is real life. It's it is life. crazy. It is fire. I congratulate both of you all. And thank you thank so you. much for stopping by Spotlight. Y'all are bringing the heat to BMF. Tell me about your characters. Me, a ladies first, ladies first. Well, Kato is the lady of the crew and she's a hustler. She's determined. You know, she has so many layers to her. And I'm just so happy that I was able to be a dominant female role amongst um, so and many. And you people. are. Yeah, like you you yeah. defy the stereotype because you go harder than the dudes half the time. You feel me? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and it just kind of shows, you know, what women have to go through, especially being a black woman. You know, you have to be strong. You have to be, you have to be dominant in order to survive in certain circumstances like that. So I'm so happy for people to watch this show and, and let them take from it what they need to yeah. do. Yeah. Now you play B Mickey. You are like, you are like their day one. You are like number three. Talk to me about yeah. him. Yeah. I'll and speak a little louder. Your voices are just a little low. Where is the mic? Is this it? This a mic. Okay. So <laughs> Let's go close. Close. Turn it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. We going to turn up. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I'm Miles Shaw, and I play the role of uh, B Mickey. And like you said, he's like the right and left hand man. Yeah, he's going to do the things that they wouldn't necessarily do. Um, the gritty things, um, but on top of that, he has a whole different lifestyle that he's living that they don't know, that they're oblivious to. That's um, right. Kato's character. Um, so just handling that and having those two worlds um, mentally, uh, it, it, it strains him, and he's having to, you know what I'm saying, cope and going around and know how to maneuver and going around those um, things throughout the uh, season. So, like, there's a whole lot of scandalous stuff that goes on with both your character, Kato, and your character, V. Mickey. Um, I, we won't, I won't spill the tea because I know folks may not have seen it yet, but um, just give us a little bit of, of that hot tea, just a little bit, just a little spoiler alert. I mean, I think the tea is that the gag is that there's tea. You feel me? There's a lot of tea. That's the tea. <laughs> That's the tea. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Tea. <laughs> no, I mean the twists and the turns are fire, and your characters, especially like Cato, uh, there is a secret about you that you know comes out that I'm not going to spill it but folks are not going to want to miss it it is so dope well congratulations real quick tell me what's one of the craziest things that happened kind of behind the scenes give us a little story oh where do I start <laughs> right oh my god I guess for me when it comes to the hair what like, happened that was it was a lot of experience. Your transformation of you like know, the transformation yes. of the flat top. <laughs> that was my experience, you know. That was really just a crazy uh, going experience for me. Um, but uh, yeah, it was the it was the the, the transformation. That is of the funny. Flat it's like every time sure. you know you start a new series, you kind of you find in it. You're like, oh, uh, uh, yeah, yep. you know, And then like... you find that one, and then and then they cut it. Then they cut it. Then the Bobby Fish. Comes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give us a little story. Yeah. Your turn. Give us story. Give us story. Uh, I don't know. You said something spicy. What is it? Something spicy. Something uh -oh, crazy, crazy that happened behind the scenes that nobody knows. Uh, I don't even know nothing. I feel like I'm the. Am I the boring one? No, you're yeah. not. <laughs> not the boring one. Your character definitely ain't boring. No, it has facts. Well, I can't think of something, but I can say this: my new single, "Same Mistakes," is out. So check it okay. out. Ooh, ooh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Check it out, everybody. Well, y'all, congratulations again. The series is fire. It's a, it's, it's a powerful story. Like, yo, I could not stop watching it. So I urge everybody to check it out. It drops Sundays on Stars. And thank you again for stopping by Spotlight. Thank you. About BMF, which of course is the story of Big Meech and Southwest T, two of the biggest drug dealers, drug empires in the late 80s. Big Meech, Larry Huber, not can't can't sing that song though, right? Because they're beefing, <laughs> 50 and red. <laughs> <laughs> and you all, you all are amazing in it as the mother and the father of Big Meech.
yes, and Southwest T. So talk to me about your characters. You're very conflicted, you know. Um, so just talk to me about your characters. And boy, I didn't even say your name, did I? I'm fired. <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> Russell Hornsby, who you saw in Fences, and we're talking about Nicole Brianna White, and your characters are just powerful. I feel your anguish and your pain as you grapple with what your sons have gotten into. So talk to me about it. Um, well, I play Lucille Flinnery, um, the spiritual matriarch of the family, the anchor, um, and uh, I had another word, and she leads from behind. Yeah. And you and are I, a strong black man. You are a strong and father up in there. Right. Brother beating his spinach. Um, <laughs> no, I, I play Charles Flinnery, uh, the, the, the patriarch, you know, hardworking blue collar man. Um, God fearing, and, uh, and a musician as well, and just there to really help, you know, be um, a support uh, network for for his for his family, for his for his children, and honestly, just doing the best he can to try to keep his kids out of harm's way. But you all and and you all have big mad tension with your sons, especially with little Meech, because he got in the trap game. And your your vision, your dream for him was go to school, and you were but you were poor, and he said, "I want the American dream the fast way." But you were y'all were not feeling that at all. So it almost gets violent. I mean, the tension is so intense that yeah. I almost feel like it could get violent, and then your heartbreak when you find out about your other son, Terry. Talk to me about that. Well, you know, there, there, there is a lot of tension, you know, in the, in the house, because again, you're talking about a family that's uh, God-fearing, that's hardworking, but also very loving and very nurturing. And so I think the, the tension from, at least from the father's standpoint, stems from all that he feels that he's, how hard he feels he's worked, all that he's given up, and what he's, the passion he's had, you know, in trying to raise his children. And I think in a sense, he feels as if they betrayed all the hard work that Charles and Lucille have done mm. uh, for their kids. I think, I see, mm. I think the pain and the frustration stems from that and because they know that if you're willing to work hard, you can get somewhere. And as we see, the kids are saying, yeah, but that's an old way. Right. You right. know what I mean? That, that, that doesn't apply to today. So... And the pain is really palpable. I mean, you as the mother, Nicole, you really bring it. You really bring it. I mean, I cried with you, you know, on, on some of those scenes. You know, I don't want to give it away. But um, where did you find that anguish inside yourself to, to bring that to the role? Um, I just try to tap into the truth as much as possible and then um, focus on the through line and the emotions pretty much just kind of come. But I also had the opportunity to speak with the real Lucille. Um, and um, so we had many conversations. I could talk to, I would talk to her between scenes, asking her things, you know, how did you feel at this time? Or what do you think about this? And sometimes she would send me a, a Bible verse in between scenes or just, you know, or say you got this or just be, she was just very encouraging about so much. Her and Nicole Flannery, the real, daughter right. too i got to talk to them both um and i i, I spent a lot of time um connecting with them and gathering. well in real life everybody evolved to accept you know what came with all that money all that bank you know the whole family did benefited from that was there ever much discussion of the other side like what that epidemic did to the black community and and the families that were torn apart by it and mm -hmm. the mothers that sold their kids for right. crack was there any ever any conversation around that no i mean I, there wasn't any conversation specifically about that i mean I, I think that when we're telling the story what we did was and what randy chose to do was begin with the origin story so we really it's it's this rise it's this sort of horatio alger climb if you will right, right, this, right. this rags to riches story so i think what, what when we're dealing with a series the beautiful thing about it is we have a lot more uh canvas to really you know paint the picture of of what the world was and and what ended up happening and what it did so i think basically what i'm saying is that season two 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Stay tuned for season. Right. So, right. I mean, you know what I mean? So, that's what I'm saying. So, right now, we're just dealing with yeah. their rise. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And, and we'll deal with about the leveling off and the plateau yeah. and all the kings that came subsequently, you know, as seasons go on. That's what's up. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. And congratulations. Your performances are stellar, powerful, amazing. Don't miss it. BMF Sundays on Stars. Yes, and applause for y'all. <laughs>